Hello, before we begin today, I want to introduce two amazing YouTube channels. The one from Enrico Ledone, the great mathematician, covers general metric spaces and Carnot groups in particular. The channel from Jonas Asim is dedicated to geometric measure theory, where you are more concerned with the subsets of Euclidean spaces, but these subsets being almost arbitrary, you have to employ a lot of techniques from metric geometry. Uh, his channel name is unfortunately not that easy to decipher. I couldn't find any meaning for this and any motivation. Now, we've been talking about Hausdorff measure using the example of one dimensional objects in R2. Now it's time to define it in general metric spaces and for general subsets. So let's fix our setting. XD is a metric space, no restriction. A is a subset of your space, again, no restriction. And we want to define the S dimensional Hausdorff measure, where S is a real number, I emphasize, not necessarily an integer, a real number in zero infinity. So if you haven't watched my one dimensional motivational video i really encourage to check it out either before this video or afterward because that's explaining all the choices that will go in in uh, the definition of hausdorff measure so before you define the hs of a the hausdorff measure of a you define some auxiliary hausdorff contents so what they are you fix a delta positive and you define hs delta a to be the infimum of such sums diameters of ei to power s i from one to infinity where infimum is over all countable coverings of your set so these ei's are, are some other subsets of your metric space again arbitrary some of them could be empty so it allows finite coverings with the condition that diameter of ei be less than or equal to delta um, we we also have to say that delta can also be infinity, in which case you have no restriction on the diameters. So that is where this delta appears. It puts a bound on how big these covering sets can be. And the S appears in the power here. So this infimum is your HS delta. And the we see that if if delta is actually smaller so smaller delta gives bigger h s delta a well to see that for a smaller delta you are talking about a smaller collection of coverings so cover some of the coverings that work for for larger delta will no longer be admissible here because they wouldn't meet this bound on the diameter condition so when you restrict your delta you don't allow as many coverings and therefore the infimum goes up because maybe the infimum was among those coverings that are now tossed out so therefore hs delta if you freeze your um, set a and s then the quantity hs delta of a will be non increasing so it may be flat at some point it may drop it may also be discontinuous we don't know and but anyway it's going up when you go towards zero Therefore, the following quantity is well defined. So limit of H S delta of A as delta goes down to zero 
is well defined and it's easy to see why it's the same as taking supremum overall delta positive of such quantities. And now that this is a well defined quantity, possibly infinite, but we accept it as the limit and we call that to be the S dimensional measure of A. So finally, we've gotten rid of that delta down there. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the S dimensional Hausdorff measure of the set A. Um, the choices we made, the reason for such coverings, the reason to send delta down to zero, the reason why HS delta is not a, a good candidate for generalizing the idea of length and area and volume has been explained in that motivational video which i will put at the end of this video and also in the subs in the description of this video um so there are lots of things to be to be proven to be um asked and answered uh, which i will leave to individual videos but here are some so remark number one uh, it could happen that for a metric space and a f and for a set a there is no covering by sets of diameter less than delta um, for instance you can take an uncountable set with the discrete metric then if you take delta to be anything less than one then there is no countable covering by sets of diameter less than delta because um, any covering any ei that you take can cannot contain more than one point then the diameter would be bigger than one or actually equal one so therefore each ei can at most cover one point so therefore a union of countably many EI will never be able to cover the uncountable set you started with. You can take the whole X to be your A. So, so it could happen that such coverings may not exist. Um, we shall prove later, and it's actually an easy exercise, that if your space is separable, then you can always find coverings uh, with diameter less than delta. But anyway, uh, to, to get out of this trouble, we agree that infimum of empty set is plus infinity. It's strange, but it agrees with the fact that if you cannot cover your set with a countable union, that means it's a huge set. So it's just uh, reasonable to say that it, uh, it is of infinite um, size or measure. And, and, and that is one thing. Number two is that um, this HS is an outer measure. For instance, it's uh, subadditive, uh, measure of empty set is zero and things like that. Uh, but actually we have more. Um, uh, so when you restrict it to its measurable sets, it becomes a measure. But is it a useful measure? Absolutely, because it's a Borel measure. That means every Borel set. So remember, Borel sets come from topology, closed and open sets. Um, they a priori have nothing to do with measures, but we love measures that kind of respect the metric of our, our space. So now, now remember that we start with a metric space, but we're also talking about a measure on that. And, and there is a good connection between them in the form that every Borel set is in fact HS measurable. And so, but there is more. Uh, it's actually Borel regular, which means for every set, there exists Borel set containing it. And equal measure to it equal HS measure to it so these are particularly nice measures on spaces um, so so indeed we're talking about a measure property number four uh, remember 
we wanted to generalize our notions of length and curves. So is HS really achieving that? So number four is that if S is some integer, a positive integer, then HS is some universal uh, constant. So let's say C, which depends on N times the Lebesgue measure. So it's basically the Lebesgue measure. If we actually some authors put these constants, which are very easily computable um, constants, we put them um, in the definition of HS so that this becomes just equality without any constant. But anyway, so this is great news because it says that uh, if you are in Euclidean space, these Hausdorff measures are not completely new objects. They are just our Lebesgue measures. And uh, this also generalizes to, to, uh, to manifold. So if M is n-dimensional manifold, we know that it, it's like a smooth manifold. We can put some measure on this manifold, which we again call a Lebesgue measure. Uh, then HN agrees with the intrinsic uh, measure. So interestingly, the proof of this is more difficult than this one because uh, once you have this one, um, you know, it's manifold theory. So you, by some local arguments and nice parameterizations, you get uh, uh, five from four. So what else is significant about these Hausdorff measures? Um, if we, so suppose you are given a set that is uh, S zero dimensional. What happens if you apply the wrong dimensional Hausdorff measure to it? And this number six answers that question in a very satisfactory way. So there exists a unique S naught in this zero plus infinity, this time is inclusive, such that H S of A is zero if S is bigger than S zero and H S of A is infinity if S is less than S zero. And that, that tells us, so this time I'm gonna have my S here and here is my HS measure of my set. So this is basically saying that there is a critical value of S naught if it's not infinity. So let's imagine it's some positive finite value. Then this is saying that um, the values of the HS measure will be zero after that point and before that point, they will be positive infinity. What happens at S0, it could be zero, it could be infinity, or it could be a finite value. But anyway, this is saying that every set has one reasonable dimension uh, to use in the Hausdorff measure. And that is so... Um, satisfying because it would be much more complicated if the same set had multiple HS measures that could be positive and finite. Um, and if, if S0 is a finite number, it's not positive infinity, we call this the Hausdorff dimension of the set A. And now we have um, a well-defined notion of saying uh, certain fractals are of 
dimension say 1.5 or dimension log 2 over log 3 and things like that and actually Hausdorff measures as I've mentioned before are uh, an indispensable tool in studying fractal objects uh, so um, why is this true for instance uh, I, I will make definitely a video about that one about the other facts here um, we will see so depending on uh, on how things go we may have individual videos proving those arguments um, or you may refer to uh, any reasonable textbook on metric geometry or geometric measure theory uh, to see them but usually there's good chance that you will find them in the exercise sections um, so if, if you want any of them to be done on my channel please put that in the comment don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. Um, I hope you like this video. See you in a future one. Uh, pretty soon, I want to say, but I will have to have a pause of a week or two uh, at most, according to some family business. We are having a new baby. Thank you so much.